Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Governor and um, other colleagues, Deputy Minister, um, thank you. And um, all of the regulators, we have SEC, um, Reverend Daniel Obamitete, MPRA, Tatakofi, and um, I think NIC, um, Justice Ofori is here. Um, because, so this has been a real um, team effort um, to get us to where we are this morning. Um, so good morning to you all. Um, as I announced um, in the evening of yesterday, Sunday, uh, 4 December 2022, uh, we are gathered here today to invite holders of domestic debt to voluntarily exchange approximately 137 billion Ghana CDs of the domestic notes and bonds of the Republic, including Estla and Dace bonds, for a package of new bonds to be issued by the Republic. The debt sustainability analysis demonstrated unequivocally that Ghana's public debt is unsustainable and that the government may not be able to fully service it down the road if no action is taken now. Indeed, debt servicing is now absorbing more than half of total government revenues and almost 70% of tax revenues while our total public debt stock, including that of state-owned enterprises and all, exceeds 100% of our GDP. This is why we are today announcing the debt exchange, which will help in restoring our capacity to service debt. This is the path towards resetting the economy to a more stable one capable of addressing the development challenges of the country. The reasons are quite clear. COVID-19 pandemic, rising global food prices, rising crude oil and energy prices, and the Russia-Ukraine war adversely affected Ghana's macroeconomy or spillovers to the financial sector. The combination of adverse external shocks have exposed Ghana to a surge in inflation, a large exchange rate depreciation, and stress on the financing of the budget, which taken together have put our public debt on an unsustainable path. To address the ongoing economic crisis, the government has requested financial support from the International Monetary Fund. We expect to reach a staff level agreement soon on an IMF program aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and protecting the most vulnerable. To this end, as a government, we are determined to implement wide-ranging structural and fiscal reforms to restore fiscal and debt sustainability and support growth. Consistent of all the above, I announced during the budget statement presented to Parliament on November 24th that government will undertake a debt operation program. We presented to you the contours of the domestic debt exchange program yesterday. As you are aware, we established a consultative committee to work with the financial sector and incorporated the advice in our decisions. Today, we are here to officially launch Ghana's domestic debt exchange program. The objective of this program is to alleviate the debt burden in a most transparent, efficient, and expedited manner in this context by means of an exchange offer. The government of Ghana has been working hard to minimize the impact of the domestic debt exchange on investors holding government bonds. In particular, it does not embed any principal haircut on eligible bonds as we promise. Let me repeat this fact as plainly as I can. In this debt exchange, individuals holding domestic bonds will not lose, are not affected um, by the value of the investment will be retained. So let us remove any doubt and discard any speculation that the government is about to cut your retirement savings or the notional value 
of your investment. This is not the case. As already announced, treasury bills are completely exempted and all holders will be paid the full value of their investment on maturity. There will be no haircut on the principal of bonds. Individuals who hold bonds would also not be affected at all. Our domestic debt operation involves an exchange for new Ghana bonds with a coupon that steps up to 10% as soon as 2025, with zero interest in 2023, and a first interest payment in 2024, and longer average maturity for the bonds. Existing domestic bonds as of 1st December 2022 will be exchanged for a set of four new bonds maturing in 2027, 2029, 2032, and 2037. Predetermined allocation ratios are as follows, 17% for the short bonds, 17% for the intermediate bonds, 25% for the medium-term bonds, and 41% for the long-term bonds. The annual coupon on all these new bonds will be set as I mentioned, at 0% in 2023, 5% in 2024, and 10% from 2025 until maturity. Coupon payments will be semi-annual. For emphasis, this domestic debt exchange program will not affect individual bondholders. This domestic debt exchange is part of a more comprehensive agenda to restore debt and financial sustainability. We are also working towards a restructuring of our external indebtedness, which we will announce in due course. This is a key requirement to allow Ghana's economy to recover as fast as possible from this crisis. This is also a key requirement to secure an IMF support. We are confident that of the measures we are putting in place including those outlined in the 2023 budget statement and underpinned by a successful IMF program, Ghana will witness a stable and thriving economy from 2023. We accordingly anticipate that inflation will be returned to single digits, ensuring that real return on these new bonds will be protected. As His Excellency the President declared in his address to the nation on 30th August, 30th October 2020, and I quote, to restore and sustain debt sustainability, we plan to reduce our total public debt to GDP ratio to some 55% in present value terms by 2028. This can only be achieved through the active participation of all key economic actors. In that perspective, we call upon all domestic debt holders to take their share in ensuring that public debt sustainability is quickly restored by participating in this exchange program. Our pledge to you all is that government will take all appropriate measures to safeguard the solvency of the financial institutions involved in the exchange. Thanks to well-targeted regulatory measures and the creation of a financial stability fund, banks, pension funds, insurance companies, fund managers, and collective investment schemes will be supported to ensure that they are able to meet the obligations to their clients as they fall due. For this reason, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana will follow suit with details of the necessary assistance in due course. We have also dialogued extensively with regulators across the financial sector, including the Securities and Exchange Commission, National Insurance Commission, and the National Pensions Regulatory Authority to agree that regulatory forbearance will be provided to all entities whose financial position is adversely affected by virtue of participating in this exchange. This debt exchange provides an orderly way to put our economy back on track. These efforts will be complemented by fiscal measures to protect the neediest and most vulnerable in society. The government expects overwhelming support to this exchange, and in truth, the success of this necessary endeavor depends, of course, upon the public's cooperation. That would also mean the media being helpful in disseminating the right information to economic actors. We are all in this together, 
and we intend to get out of this together. The alternative will be a far worse economic crisis with protracted closure from international markets, including imported goods and services, and further domestic e economic instability, both for the real economy and the financial sector. It would also mean depleted fiscal resources to support the neediest. Ghana is not the first nation to undertake such domestic debt oppression. To illustrate the point, let me cite examples of just two countries, among many others in the last decade. Jamaica resorted to such operations in the past, notably in 2010 and 2013. In both cases, it shows the sense of responsibility of the American people and proceeded through a voluntary approach. The approach was highly successful as more than 99% of holders of domestic bonds participated in the exchange. On the contrary, in the case of Greece, the authorities chose to undertake a coercive approach whereby a law was passed to force people into participating. We intend to avoid as much as possible the Greek approach as we strive to reach a consensual solution with our bondholders, which really is the Ghanaian way. In any case, the good news is that the domestic debt exchange has yielded positive results both in Greece and Jamaica and many others, and will certainly put our economy on a much stronger footing. Greece, as you know, has now recovered full market access. We certainly anticipate a similar success story in Ghana. I want to assure you about the government's commitment to do what is necessary to ensure that we succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, today's announcement is a major policy step that the government is taking over the short period to restore macroeconomic stability, achieve debt sustainability, and get the economy fully back on track in order to create and protect jobs, provide and enhance incomes, foster strong and inclusive growth led by exports, and restore hope to the Ghanaian people. In all humility, I wish to remind each and every one of us that Ghana is the only home we have. Its progress and prosperity are our collective duty. We have overcome many challenges and risen to the occasion many times before. We are a resilient society. Thankfully, today our development is in a far more advanced stage than before when other challenges confronted us. We have made big progress over the years and the progress before us is even greater. This is another challenge which we must surely overcome. And overcome we must for our sake and for the sake of our children. Together, we can beat this. Our ultimate goal, when all is done, is to put our nation into a sustainable development path, one of fiscal responsibility and rectitude, economic stability and growth, that will truly translate into improving the lives of the people and all of the nation's economic actors, including investors. Your support, fellow Ghanaians, can help us realize this ambition. I say this because I know that together we shall triumph. And as in the days of Nehemiah, let us all rise up, family by family, and rebuild together. Let us make our Inkabom budget a reality. Thank you, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you.